What's up everybody, Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. What happened today in the market was not out of the ordinary. We're gonna explain why on today's show and what I think is gonna be taking place next. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so what happened today? The Fed, they rose interest rates by 0.5%. So that was anticipated, it was priced into the market. Why did the market all of a sudden rocket up? As you probably already know, it started roaring after Steve Leisman asked the question about a 75 basis point hike, and the Fed said that wasn't really necessarily on the table, the market then took that as good news despite all the hawkish talk that was taking place. Now, I didn't make a video yesterday. I made one the day prior kind of explaining what I was you know, planning on seeing in the market, and that was really just because I, I didn't see the need to put one out yesterday because I knew the market wasn't going to do much. It was going to be chop. But holy moly, I left when it was just absolutely incredibly bearish 100 bearish sentiment out there and we were talking about the case for a bounce flipping a start of a bear market rally and holy moly i come back today and everyone's posting charts about this bullish narrative and i'm going to kind of walk you through what i'm seeing in the markets but um jc over here at all-star charts he posted this i thought this was kind of cool so i used it as a thumbnail um 2010 2011 right it was a head and shoulders pattern and then we started ripping up higher um, and then he shows here the head and shoulder pattern, very similar type. And what is a question mark going going to start skyrocketing up? I mean, I don't I don't think it's going to be that um, sort of you know mentality. But hey, I'm I'm always open to that possibility here. Um, I will notice one difference that wasn't pointed out was so you see this little mark right here. Th this head and shoulders actually hit another low right here, and then started rallying. And then this one actually had a higher low. So that is a little bit different there. Um, Yuri is another one that I like following on Twitter. Um, he's just pointing out the similarities between the price action, the tape of 2006 and 2022, and you see this monster rally. So hey, a lot of, like it's it's like boom, a snap of the finger. Everyone starts posting bullish charts for the possibility for these big bounces. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I thought that we were going to begin to bounce. We got a bounce. How how big is that bounce going to be? Well, we'll dive into what the options market priced in. But so far, watch and learn. All right, no, moving on. But also, <laughs> I keep on putting up people's tweets. Michael Berry, um, he did point this out. So somebody who is still bearish, he said he pointed out that dead cat bounces are the most epic, right? And that's true, especially dead cow bounces in bear markets, right? We get these face-ripping rallies, we call them. 12 of the top 20 NASDAQ one-day rallies happened during a 78% drop from the 2000s top. Nine of the top 20 S&P 500 one-day rallies happening during an 86% drop, but that was from 1929. Look at the market. <laughs> the market is still in a bearish trend, all right? Now, when we look at that one-minute chart, what does that look like? What took place today? Well, you can see, it did nothing. We started getting some information, and then all of a sudden, Steve Leisman asked a question, and hala, hallelujah, the market roars and roars fast, Okay. Now, we posted a couple of charts here. I'm not going to dig too much into these BP charts because of the fact we've already talked about them to we're blue in the face. We said they're getting overextended. This is not where you want to short. Look for a possible bounce. Now, guess what? We're working off those overextended areas. So if you are bullish the market, I would actually like to see a bullish divergence form for a more continued move. But as it stands right now, we are working on those overextended levels. And then I showed this chart on the prior video too as well, talking about flipping. If this flips, it'd be more focused on growth and value. And well, what did we see today in the markets? We saw tech leading the way um, up there in second place, a 3.5%. Energy was up there 4%. Holy moly, that thing ripped. And then we had the more defensive names. Although they were in the green, they were more door down, down towards the bottom of the list. But holy moly, just take a look at all that green. So everything just lit up completely bright for the day. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's look at this spy. All right, we had a huge risk range, okay? And as you can see, what, what's the trend right now? The trend, it's still bearish. We're below the 20, 50, 200-day moving average, okay? We have, a we have a high, we have a lower high, and we're down here right now, okay? We have a low, lower low, and we have a lower low. The trend is still bearish. It is still bearish by all means. All we're doing is getting, as it stands right now, a bear market rally. That's that's all that this is. Um, until proven... get. Um, Still proven innocent, unfortunately. That's that's we just got to be cautious here. Now, another cause for concern. I mean, this was a nice. Don't get me wrong. That's a big, nice bullish day. Some good volume stepped in. MACD's curling over RSI's still below that 50 marker. But we actually, if we zoom into the chart, let's zoom in a little bit more. Guess what? 
bam, we tag the upper risk range. So what do I think personally is going to take place? Well, this is a big bullish day. I think we can get outside of it a little bit more. I think that's more than possible. Actually, I would want to see that. And then I'd start looking for short opportunities. Uh, maybe not in the SPY, but I would be looking at a couple other ones, which we'll get into, and I'll get into the reasons as to why I'd be looking at these as short opportunities. Now, if you remember on the prior video, we talked about the SPY on the 15-minute time frame when it broke out, waited all day for it, doodled around, just like we said, and bam, it started firing off. So, hey, you know, you get some right, you get some wrong. This is where I took profits. I took my profits off the table. Um, I locked it in. It is what it is, and I have maybe like a few shares remaining. So we are at that upper risk range. What can potentially happen? RSI is completely crispy up here at 85.03. If we get a gap up, I think it's going to come back down. Um, and notice the volume profile. These can act like magnets, right? It acted as resistance here when they chopped around all day, came back outside of it. Really, we're just range bounce. If we get more outside of it, it's always possible to come right back into this level by all means. So that's why I'm saying we got to start looking positioning short here because the reward to the upside is getting minimal because of this already overextended move. Don't get me wrong, we can bust out of this and there's not much volume here that can really fire this off. And remember, just like with risk ranges on the bottom side, right? If it gets way outside of it, more selling um, selling into selling takes place with um, dynamic hedging. But the same thing goes here. If it gets way outside of it and it holds it consistently, more buying is going to go into that buying too. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, if you take a look at the VIX, it broke down from that falling wedge, got down more than I thought. We have one gap above us right here. It's very small. Um, we filled these two gaps and look where we tagged. Bam, perfectly on the T, just under that 25. It was a low of 24.94, and the RSI is pretty burnt to a crisp here too. So I think tomorrow, I think tomorrow is going to be either just a very mild day. I don't think it's going to be too aggressive given the context of the market, but it does look like it's going to take a little bit of a breather after watching the market just rip three plus percent. Um, but let's get, continue on here. Okay, look at the cues. The cues getting outside of that upper risk range. And yes, we are still in bearish context. If you zoom in here, you can see it's getting outside of that risk range. Big volume came in, right? And the MACD is starting to curl up over. The RSI is starting to curl up. You know, the markets like this, they do whatever they can to suck more people in. But as it stands right now, be mindful of the trend. The trend is still down, okay? So don't FOMO into this level, right? If the market wants to go higher, it will give us opportunities to do so. But going long on the very upper risk range, you know, when there's two days left into the week and it already ran 3.38%, I mean, can this be the last, like, do you, do you think that right here is going to be the last time the market's ever right, going to be right here? Is it just going to go straight up and David Hunter us, uh, you know, all the way up to the moon? Hey, hey, you know, I guess you can't rule it out, but I, I just think that that's highly unlikely right now. All right, so here's the cues on the 15 minute time frame. You can see here RSI is burnt to a crisp, hit that upper risk range. We still have a gap above us. I don't know why this one's here. I had to delete that, but we do have this one where it closed. It got all like mixed up. I wonder why. But yeah, we do still have one gap above us. So that's always in the card to potentially fill and act as resistance. But as it stands right now, this was one big strong move. It's already at the upper risk range. We have two more trading days left. RSI is burnt to a crisp. Just be careful here. This is not where, I, you know, this is not personally where if you're a tactical trader and, you know, the, the Fed is hawkish, they're going to be reducing their balance sheet. They're tightening into, into sp slowing growth, right? This is, it's not, have we seen a normal update yet? Like, ask yourself that. Has any, have we seen one normal update really? No, it's been a monster bear market rally is, is the ones that we've seen. That's all we've seen, really. It, it's just been, you know, bleeding out, right? The queues are down tremendously on the year. All these big top hedge funds are down tremendously on the year. Uh, the composite is down tremendously on the year. Spy is down. IWM completely crushed down on the year, okay? So, yeah, um, trend. Low, 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 lower highs. Another lower high. We have a low, low, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low. Trend is still down, people. Okay, I know how I know everyone wants this thing to start going back up and ripping. But remember, we distributed distribution here for um, I don't know over a year. You think the big dogs are going to just enter right in and we're going to just blow through these levels? I don't know. There's a lot of trap supply there. I'm always open to that opportunity. Trust me. I I, pref I would prefer to see the David Hunter melt up. That's what I would like to see because I like playing things from the long perspective. Because being short, you have to be aggressive. You have to be more tactical. You have to be way more aware. But if we zoom in here on the IWM, 
take a look. We're at the upper risk range, right? Two more trading days left. Can we get outside of it a little bit more? Um, me personally, I think IWM is actually going to be a good short. Why? Well, the IWM has been getting crushed one of the one of the most um, out of all these big indices indexes um, so far. Um, from its prior high. So I think that the IWM is going to be a good short. I think Qs are going to be a good short. Um, the SPY, um, I think that there's opportunities there, but I think they'll be more alpha delivered from the shorts perspective on IWM and also the um, uh, Qs. Okay, if we look at the 15 minute time frame, you can see RSI is burnt to a crisp here. So if we get outside of it a little bit more, you know, that's a good opportunity, but it's also a potential good opportunity here because I think that we could come retag this five day moving average as it starts to curl back up. And remember, right, volume shelf profile, boom. Okay, it's been in this range. Cool, it gets outside of the range. It's it's just range trading right now and it's hitting its upper risk range. So at like, look how efficient the market is. It's literally tagged to a T and it priced this price in on the close of Friday last week. That is how efficient these markets are right now. Nothing out of the ordinary is actually taking place. We just need to be aware of what's actually going on. I wanna look at a couple other sectors here just to kind of go over this, XLK, all right? So a big portion of the queues, right? We look at XLK, MACD, bullish crossover, nice big bullish day. Take a look at that volume, it doesn't even exist. And we're up there at the upper risk range. So, I mean, do, is this the best area to go along? In my opinion, no, not right now, not at all. Okay, so there, XLK, it's at the upper risk range. Financials, also a potential short opportunity. These have been getting slammed, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, low, lower, low, lower, low, and a lower low. And now we're upside of the upper risk range here. So if we get outside of it a little bit more, these are opening the doorways to start taking profits from the long side if you're tactical and start looking at shorts. That is how I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. I haven't placed any shorts as of right now, but that is what I'm paying attention to as it stands right now. And XLY, it's getting outside of that risk range too as well, meaning that, hey, this move can be you know coming to an end here soon. Although everyone's trying to hop on the train that it's gonna be very bullish and we're just gonna continue to rip. But take a look down at that volume. That volume does not even exist. This move down was on big volume. This move up was on no volume. Okay, now we're at the upper risk range. So can we extend further? Yes, the higher the better in my opinion if it starts going up higher because that's gonna offer up better short opportunities um, given the current context of the chart. Okay, so that is what we need to look for being tactical. The last thing here I wanna point out um, is Tesla. And Tesla is at its upper risk range too as well. Okay, so this was up 4.77% on the day. Tesla does crazy things all the time, but I just wanted to call out that we're right around that 20 day moving average and we're at that upper risk range. So also a potential opportunity to look for a short. We were talking about a potential back test of 975, right? It, cracked down through this level on basically Elon Musk selling, right? Boom, it came down. Now we're doing that back test. So we haven't got a for sure back test yet, but I mean, that to me looks like an opportunity. Maybe we get above it a little bit and then start coming back in. Um, always a possibility there. Um, I'm always hesitant to short Tesla, to be honest, especially that Tesla is technically in a bullish trend. You have a you have a upsloping 200 day moving average, but it is something on, the, uh, on my eye. Okay, um, the last piece I wanna add here um, as we're now in the conclusion section, the reason why I'm saying Russell is a potential short in the queues is because look at volatility. Volatility came off today, or for the week I should say, this is a weekly chart, but it is still there above 30, 30.24. So what does that mean? It means you're gonna get tossed around still. Until this comes off significantly and we stop putting in higher lows, volatility is still very high here on the Russell 2000, making it an opportunity to potentially short. I think it still can come down, that's, you know, by all means, but just take note that here it is still trending, okay? And then not only that, if you take a look at also NASVOL, NASDAQ volatility, this is also, this is NASDAQ 100 volatility, closed at 31.98. So yeah, it came off, but still higher low, higher low, higher low. So it is still trending volatility here on the weekly time frame. So yeah, be careful out there, right? No FOMO. Don't don't play the FOMO game. This is this is a very very dangerous market to trade. So either you sit on your hands or you kind of just you know watch and observe. I mean, or, or you don't you either sit on your hands, watch and observe, or you go ahead and you know be very tactical in this environment. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. See you later.